The Natufians were the original inhabitants of the so-called Middle East. In other words, Saudi Arabia, Israel, Iraq, Jordan, and other areas. They are known to be the inventors of agriculture 12,500 years ago. The Natufians just preceded the time span at which domesticated plants began to appear in archaeological record and the Yale archaeologists believe they were probable inventors of agriculture in the Near East. Some evidence suggests deliberate cultivation of cereals, specifically rye, by the Natufian culture at Tel Abu Haraya, the site of earliest evidence of agriculture in the world. The world's oldest evidence of bread making has been found at Shubega, a 14,500 year old site in Jordan's northeastern desert, which makes them also the first people to make bread. In 2018, it was reportedly that tiny pieces of bread were found in fireplaces used by the Natufians well over 14,000 years ago, predating agriculture by thousands of years. Nicola Davis wrote in The Guardian, shard crumbs found in a pair of ancient fireplaces have been identified as the earliest examples of bread, suggesting it was being prepared long before the dawn of agriculture. The remains Tiny lumps, a few millimeters in size, were discovered by archaeologists at a site in the Black Desert in northeast Jordan. Using radiocarbon dating of shard plant materials found within the hearths, the team found the fireplaces were used just over 14,000 years ago. Source, Nicola Davis, The Guardian, July 16, 2018, for those who are interested. Bread has been seen as a product of agriculturalists settled societies but evidence from jordan now basically predates the onset of plant cultivation by at least three thousand years said dr tobias richter co-author of the study from the university of copenhagen he noted that fully fledged agriculture in the levant is believed to have emerged around 8000 bc so bread was being made by the natufians before they started to cultivate any plants he said the intervention triggered the development of first civilizations in all the areas mentioned. The invention of agriculture triggered such a change in society and the way in which people lived that its development has been called the Neolithic Revolution. Traditional hunter-gatherer lifestyles followed by humans since their evolution were swept aside in favor of permanent settlements. And they were among the first people to build permanent houses and cultivate edible plants. You see, the agricultural revolution changed the way people lived forever and it changed the planet. As bands of hunter-gatherers began domesticating plants and animals, they quit the nomadic life building villages and towns that endured for thousands of years and set the foundation for the lives we live today. A stable food supply enabled the Neftufians to explode and small groups turned into kingdoms spreading across hundreds of miles. Agriculture originated in a few small hubs around the world, but probably first in the Fertile Crescent, a region in the Near East, including parts of modern-day Iraq, Syria, Lebanon, Israel, Jordan, and many other places in that region. The evidence for full-blown agriculture there, crops, livestock, tools, for food preparation and villages dates back more than 11,000 years. In the 1990s, archaeologists largely concluded that farming in the Fertile Crescent began in Jordan and Israel, a region known as the Southern Levant. The model was that everything started there and that everything spread out from there, including maybe the people, said Melinda A. Zetter, a senior research scientist at the Smithsonian National Museum of Natural History. In the 1980s, Danny Nadell, then at Hebrew University, and his colleagues excavated a 23,000-year-old site on the shores of the Sea of Galilee known as Ohelo II. It consisted of a half a dozen brush huts. Dr. Nadell co-authored a study showing that one of the huts contained 150,000 charred seeds and fruits, including many types such as almonds, grapes, and olives, that would later become crops. A stone blade found at Ohelo II seemed to have been used as a sickle to harvest cereals. A stone slab was used to grind the seeds. It seems very clear 
that the inhabitants were cultivating wild plants long before farming was thought to have begun. Approximately 15,000 years ago, in the oldest known cemetery in the world, people buried their dead in sitting positions with beads and animal horns deep in a cave in what is now Morocco. These people were also found with small sophisticated stone arrowheads and points, and 20th century archaeologists assumed that they were part of an advanced European culture that had migrated across the Mediterranean Sea to North Africa. However, now their ancient DNA, the oldest ever obtained from Africans, shows that these people had no European ancestry. Instead, they were related to both Middle Eastern and Sub-Saharan Africans, suggesting that more people were migrating in and out of North Africa than previously believed. And as we said in the previous video, make no mistake about it. The so-called Middle Easterners and the Northern Africans, Africans. The indigenous people were all black people. Several biologists like Yosef Nasaridis and Nadia Roland, both of Harvard University, studied their bodies and they found that the indigenous people of the Middle East had Y chromosome of African origin. They had no Neanderthal admixture. It made them different from all other populations. In other words, they were black African explorers who settled in that area after the last ice age. The haplogroup E1b1 is the main haplogroup inside the African continent today. In its original form, almost exclusively among black African people found in Ghana, Ethiopia, Burkina Faso, Senegal, South Africa, Gambia, Cameroon, Tanzania, and even among some so-called African Americans. So you see folks, black people invented agriculture. That's right. You know that thing that grows fruit? Fruit like apples, oranges, grapes, lemons, watermelons, cantaloupe, cherries, avocado, all kind of nut trees that include almond, peanuts, walnut, pecans, etc., rice, soybean, and oil crops. You know, sugars, vegetables, collard greens, string beans, black eyed peas, cabbage, broccoli. I mean, I can go on and on and on. And let's not forget corn. And corn is the most widely produced feed grain in the United States, the majority of which is used towards feeding livestock. So even the support of the livestock that we actually feed on comes from agriculture, which was invented, again, by black people. And let's not forget cotton which also comes from agriculture, which contribute to our clothing as well as other things. So the next time you eat fruit, vegetables, nuts, or bread, or you wear cotton clothing or linen, just remember that you have black people to thank for it. That's not bad for people who was told they had no history, but when you do the research, you find that nothing could be further from the truth. And we also get comments as like they think we're racist, which we are not. We're not t just because we're lifting up our people does not mean we're against anybody. As we've said many times, we are not against any group of people. God made all of us. However, since this is the Black Excellence in Abundance channel, what else would you expect? If, if you want to get some another perspective, well, I mean, that's okay too. But this is the Black Excellence in Abundance channel. The Black Excellence in Abundance channel where black history is every day. Thanks for watching. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe. And always remember, Thou art